A week tomorrow, the KF Chamber Choir will be back on the west coast of Canada as part of their 2009 Canadian tour. To give you a sneak preview of this award-winning Ukrainian ensemble, I have one of the tour organizers on the line with me now. His name is Ernie McCullough, and he is a partner with Andrew Witter in Platinum Concerts International, and he's also the executive director of the Cross Canada Tour of the Cave Chamber Choir this month. Thanks so much for joining us, Ernie. You're more than welcome. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak with you. Now, this is the third time since the fall of 2004 that people in Canada will be able to enjoy the music of the world-renowned Cave Chamber Choir live. Tell us a little bit about this year's tour and why you're bringing the choir back to Canada. Well, Paulette, it's, it's always a joy for us to have the opportunity to bring the Kiev Chamber Choir back because they truly are one of the world's great choirs. And as people who have seen them will attest, they are also the most entertaining uh, performers that you're likely to see in the course of the year in any given type of music. And uh, so in that context, it's very, very simple for us to say, you know, it's time for them to come back. And uh, we uh, got in touch with some various people that we thought might be interested in being sponsors or patrons for this tour. And uh, in spite of the economy, most of them just quickly said, fine, let us know what you're doing and we'll get behind this. We love the Kiev Chamber Choir. And so uh, the bottom line is they're coming back uh, this spring. They will be starting on tour on April the 22nd in Montreal, and they'll finish on May the 5th in Kitchener-Waterloo in Ontario. And in the process, they will um, have performed 12 concerts in 14 days. So wow. in addition to being one of the great, talented, and entertaining choirs, they're certainly the most hardworking group of people that I think I've ever seen. And energetic. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, they will, of, of, of course, uh, and that's the other thing, too, and even though they do wonderful music, uh, uh, much of the tour uh, is done from the, uh, a motor coach. So um, they're covering a lot of kilometers, uh, as you know, be going through the Rocky Mountains and mm -hmm. so on. So it's, uh, it's a, a challenge for them, but they are consummate professionals. Um, they just uh, get up on, on stage in, in uh, the venues that we've found, and, and they just perform with their hearts out. They're very, very passionate about the music that they perform. Mm. And uh, I uh, was saying to somebody the other day that, you know, I've probably had the, the good fortune to see them perform somewhere between 25 and 30 times. And, uh, and I'm still excited when I hear them, and I have never seen them not bring the audience to their feet. Mm. It's a wonderful group of musicians. Now, how do you decide on the venues for the Cave Chamber Choir's concerts, especially uh, in Vancouver? Well, that's interesting, Paulette, because, uh, you know, the choir is basically a choral music, a classical music group. So um, we've been very fortunate over the years to be able to work with the Provincial Choral Federation. So we got in touch with the folks at the, uh, the um, BC Choral Federation and told them that we were having concerts this year in Vancouver and for the first time in Victoria and ask their opinion and their thoughts about suitable venues for a choir of this caliber. Um, so naturally, you have to have the finest acoustic that you can mm -hmm. find. Um, you also need things like lighting and sound and, and, and uh, access to parking and, and so on. But mm -hmm. uh, um, the BC Choral Federation very, very quickly said to us, well, if we had no constraints and we were doing a concert, in Vancouver, there's absolutely no question that the place that we would look at as, as being a great venue would be St. Andrew's Wesley United Church, which is um, one of the classic old churches mm -hmm. downtown, mm -hmm. um, right at Nelson and Burrard Street. And, right. and uh, uh, we think it's very easy for people in Vancouver to be able to get to that church, but it's one of those venues that... Um, where the acoustic makes the uh, the talent of the uh, of the singers just come come right through to your ears. Mm -hmm. So, can you tell us about what we're going to hear at the choir's Vancouver concert, and that's coming up Tuesday, the twenty eighth, and they'll also be in Victoria. Maybe we should get you to tell us a little bit about the Victoria venue as well while we're at it. Okay. Well, um, the Victoria concert will be the day before. And, uh, by the way, the Kiev Chamber Choir will get an opportunity to ride on that ferry boat mm -hmm. that you out there enjoy. <laughs> Lucky them. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be their first time, uh, and uh, indeed my first time on that ferry boat as well. But uh, the, their Victoria concert will be the night before, Monday, April 27th. And it'll be in First Metropolitan United Church in Victoria. And, again, that was a venue recommended by the B.C. Choral Federation. Now, at 
each of these concerts, they, and the concert is the same right across the country, um, the first half of the concert is traditional, classical choral music. Um, choral music, in my humble opinion, is, is absolutely at the core of Ukrainian culture, in the same way that in other European cultures, perhaps symphony music would be uh, at the center. But um, uh, the, the Ukrainian choral music is is um, is based on the, the, the works of some great composers over the last uh, centuries. And uh, so the first half is somewhat traditional. The choir are in tuxedo and dark, and, and dark clothing, and, and they, they sing this music with great, great passion and with great talent. Then there's an intermission, and then they come back, they've changed their clothing, and they're doing a folk uh, set. And the folk set um, really draws on music that may go back as far as a thousand years ago, which is quite incredible mm. in, in the world of music. And the songs, though, uh, because they are old in many cases, they've got wonderful melodies and, and funny little lyrics and so on, but they've all been arranged by some of the better modern composers in Ukraine. And so you get the kind of modern melodic things plus the wonderful old um, uh, melodies, and uh, and uh, the conductor uh, Mikola Habdich has combined these so that they are most entertaining, even for someone like myself who doesn't speak Ukrainian. Um, I can just enjoy these things thoroughly. But what also happens is he doesn't just see that he should simply have the choir sing these songs. He has them play folk instruments. They have choreography. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the song may be. Um, sung by just the men or perhaps just the women mm -hmm. and so it's the most engaging performance and literally by the end of the second half uh, people just rise to their feet in a standing ovation and, and uh, mm -hmm. they, they get so involved in this but it is literally unlike anything I've ever seen in the world of music.